Find your name on the list or type it in. Then choose Start. L I I N G. Hi, I'm Reader Rabbit. And I'm Sam the Lion. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our reading, reading adventure. adventure. Special delivery for Reader Rabbit and Sam the Lion. That was fast. I hope you'll enjoy your books. See you later. Hmm. Which book should we read first? Our books. Now what'll we do? Look, it's the story of King Midas. And I have the ugly duckling. You can help Sam and me. Click on the book you want to read. King Midas. Click on the character you want to tell the story. Rawr. Thanks for choosing me, Sam the Lion. Let me tell you the story of King Midas. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Click on Sam to hear all of the words. Here are some of the special words in this story. Sunbeam, garden, golden touch, statue, breakfast, river, king, flower. Let's match and order things from the story. I have some questions about the story. No problem. Let's look at my story map. It has all the important words and events from the story. Coming through. Not again. Oh, my story map is a mess. You can help read a rabbit. Click on Story Match to match words and pictures. Click on Story Order to put events in the right order. Okay, let's match words to pictures from the story. My map is all messed up. You've got to help me. Click on a picture and then click on the matching word. Rocks. Rocks. Leaves. Leaves. Nose. Nose. <laughs> Paper, paper. Daughter, daughter. <laughs> yeah, you did it! Now all the words match the pictures, so I can read my story map. You did it! <laughs> Click here when you're done with your map. Time for a party! <laughs> Click on me, and you can play the map game again. All right! Coming through! Not again! Oh, my story map is a mess! You can help read a rabbit. Click on Story Match to match words and pictures. Click on Story Order to put events in the right order. Just look! All the events from the story are in the wrong order. Travel along the road and put all of the pictures in the right order. King Midas learned to be happy without gold. King Midas learned to be happy without gold. <laughs>
King Midas went to look at his golden treasures. King Midas went to look at his golden treasures. <laughs> gold. King Midas turned marigold into gold. King Midas turned marigold into gold. No. King Midas turned his fountain in. King Midas turned his fountain into gold. King Midas's blanket turned into gold. <laughs> gold. Yeah, you did it. Now everything is in order, so I can read my story map. All right. Time for a party. Click on me, and you can play again. Let's write a letter. I have some things I'd like to say to the story characters. I know. Let's write a letter. Can you help me? You can help. Click on the character you want to write to. Okay. Let's write to King Midas. Click on Sam to begin. Midas. Dear King Midas. Nice. Sometimes you were a nice king. If you want to make another choice, just click on another picture. Click on OK when you're ready to go on. Sad. <coughs> Sometimes you were a sad king. Greedy. <coughs> Sometimes you were a greedy king. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Your daughter. What do you think about your daughter? Wishes. What do you think about wishes? Gold. What do you think about gold? Click on Sam to hear the letter. Boring. <sighs> I think gold is boring. Heavy. I think gold is heavy. Shiny. I think gold is shiny. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Give it away. If I had a lot of gold, I would give it away. Bury it. If I had a lot of gold, I would bury it. Buy lots of things. If I had a lot of gold, I would buy lots of things. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Sincerely, Sam. Love, Sam. Click on Sam to hear the letter. In the freezer. P.S. Never leave your gold in the freezer. Under a couch. P.S. Never leave your gold under a couch. In the fireplace. P.S. Never leave your gold in the fireplace. Click on Sam to hear the whole letter. <laughs> Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, I don't know. This could take a while. <coughs> Special delivery for Sam from King Midas. Click on King Midas to hear his letter. Dear Sam, you asked what I think about gold. Well, gold can be a great thing. It's shiny, it's heavy, and it's fun to play with. But too much gold can be a problem. I think gold is nice, but now I know that it isn't the most important thing. Sincerely, King Midas.
Click on the picture when you are done. I'll be back a little later, in case you have another letter to send. Look, we can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write to Mr. Wish. Dear Mr. Wish, do sad. <laughs> do you ever feel sad? Happy. Do you ever feel happy? Tired? <sighs> do you ever feel tired? Do homework. I also wonder, do you ever do homework? Sleep? I also wonder, do you ever sleep? Eat. I also wonder, do you ever eat? Do homework. I also wonder, Granting wishes. I bet your homework is about granting wishes. Gold. I bet your homework is about gold. Magic. I bet your homework is about magic. Granting wishes. Maps. I would like to learn about maps. Flying. I would like to learn about flying. Science. I would like to learn about science. Homework. Wishes. Science. Love, Sam. A baseball player. P.S. Maybe you should be a baseball player who grants wishes. Baseball. A principal. P.S. Maybe you should be a principal who grants wishes. Principal. A president. P.S. Maybe you should be a president who grants wishes. President. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, I don't know. This could take a while. <coughs> Special delivery for Sam from Mr. Wish. Dear Sam, thanks for your letter. It would be grand to be a president who grants wishes. I would grant one wish to everyone in the country. I hope that no one asks for the golden touch. Yours truly, Mr. Wish. Toodaloo! I'll be back a little later. Look, we can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write to Marigold. Dear Marigold, does your garden make you feel silly? Does your garden make you feel silly? Hungry? Does your garden make you feel hungry? Happy? Does your garden make you feel happy? Trampoline? It might look better with a giant trampoline in it. Trampoline. Carrot. It might look better with a giant carrot in it. Hose. It might look better with a giant hose in it. Trampoline. It might... Sleep. If you had a trampoline, you could sleep on it. Paint. If you had a trampoline, you could paint on it. Jump! If you had a trampoline, 
You could jump on it. Apples. And if you jump, you could collect apples. Flies. And if you jump, you could collect flies. Butterflies. And if you jump, you could collect butterflies. Love, Sam. In your bedroom. P.S. Don't grow a garden in your bedroom. In your hair. P.S. Don't grow a garden in your hair. At the beach. P.S. Don't grow a garden at the beach. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, I don't know. This could take a while. Special delivery for Sam from Marigold. Dear Sam, a big trampoline in our garden would be great. If I jumped high enough, I could collect all kinds of things. I could collect apples, butterflies, or even flies. My pet frog would like a fly collection. Your friend Marigold. Adios. Look, we can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write again later. King Midas lived long ago in a faraway land. He loved gold and had many golden treasures. There was only one thing he loved more than gold. His real treasure was marigold. Every morning, King Midas and Marigold would eat breakfast together. Today, I'll play outside, Marigold would say. I think I'll play with my pet rabbit. Or maybe I'll play with my pet frog. That's nice, dear, King Midas would say. But he wasn't really listening to her. <laughs> hey, Daddy, I think I'll play with my rabbit and my frog. <laughs> After breakfast, King Midas and Marigold would go to the garden. One morning, something strange happened. As Marigold played, a bright gold sunbeam touched the roses nearby. Those flowers look like gold, said King Midas. I wish they were gold. These flowers look like gold.
King Midas went to the room where he kept his gold. He looked at his pots full of gold coins. He looked at his gold boxes and shiny gold candlesticks. But he still wanted more. Oh, I wish I could make gold, he said. Then I would be truly happy. Gold. Click on a page to go to that page. I'm Mr. Wish. Be careful what you wish for. What do you mean? I know what I want. Be careful what you wish for, said a voice. Your wish might come true. A man in golden robes appeared in the room. I wish I could make gold, said the king. Very well, said the man. When the first sunbeams of morning come into your room, everything you touch will turn to gold. Are you coming outside soon, Daddy? Just a moment, Angel. Just finishing up some business. You could be the engineer of a choo-choo train. You could ask for world peace. No, no, no! Gold is definitely what I want. I'm a very simple king, and I really don't ask for much. Just happiness for my daughter, and oh yes, the golden touch. Happy wishes! I've got the golden touch! Early the next morning, a gold sunbeam came into the room. It shined brightly on the bed. King Midas woke up. He felt something strange. The blanket in his hands had turned to gold. I have the golden touch, King Midas cried happily. <laughs> Everything I touch turns to gold. King Midas jumped out of bed. He ran around the room touching everything. He turned pictures to gold. He turned vases to gold. He even turned his socks to gold. Gold socks might not be comfortable, he said. But I don't care. I love all this gold. I've always wanted gold socks. I think I'll turn this vase to gold.
King Midas ran to the garden. Yesterday, I wished the roses were gold, he said. Today, I will make them gold. And he did, with a touch of his finger. King Midas turned trees and rocks and fountains to gold. He even turned Marigold's pets to gold. He just couldn't help himself. Ow! Ow! A golden bunny, I'm so funny. At breakfast, Marigold looked unhappy. King Midas tried to cheer her up. Doesn't the garden look wonderful? He asked. No, said Marigold. It doesn't look wonderful. The flowers don't smell nice. The trees are too slippery to climb. And look at my pets. Oh, did you see my golden tree? And doesn't the garden look wonderful? No, it doesn't look wonderful. The trees are too slippery to climb. <laughs> Marigold began to eat. At least this food is not gold, she said. King Midas took a bite of apple. Clink! Ouch! he said. He drank some juice. Clank! Ouch! He said. The king became very upset. How can I eat when everything turns to gold? He cried. Here, Daddy, have some of my food. No, 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 no. <laughs> Marigold wanted to make her father feel better. Don't be sad, she said. Let's play. Toss me up in the air like you always do. Before King Midas could stop her, Marigold ran into his arms. At once, she turned to gold. Don't be sad. Come on, let's play. No, Marigold, stay away. Throw me up into the air. No! King Midas was terribly upset. 
I have lost the thing I love most in the world, he cried. Gold means nothing to me now. I only want my daughter back. I wish I never had the golden touch. I've lost the thing I love the most in the world. I wish I never had the golden touch. Didn't I tell you to be careful what you wished for? Didn't I tell you to be careful what you wished for? said a voice. The man in the golden robes suddenly appeared again. Please help me, begged King Midas. Here is what you must do, said the man. Go to the river and fill a jug with water. Pour the water on everything you turned to gold. No, 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 gold. I must have the golden touch. Remember? Oh, yes, I remember. But that was before I realized what is really important. Oh, Mr. Wish, I was wrong. I don't want the Golden Touch. I want my Marigold back. Interesting. All right, here's what you must do. Go to the river, fill a jug with water, and pour it on everything you turn to. King Midas ran to the river. He filled his jug with water. He hurried home. As he ran, Water dripped on rocks, trees, and flowers. They turned brown and green and purple. How beautiful everything is, said King Midas. King Midas poured water on Marigold. He held his breath. In a moment, Marigold was herself again. I'm so happy, she cried. Now we can play together, said King Midas. Just as soon as I water this garden. Let me help you, said Marigold. Pour the water on me. No gold in sight. Thank goodness. I have an idea. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> 
Marigold and her father poured water on flowers, trees, and Marigold's pets. Soon the garden was filled with life and color. All that day, King Midas and Marigold played in the garden. There's no gold in sight, laughed Marigold. Thank goodness, said her father happily. on one of these buttons to play an activity or read a story. All right! When you are... King Midas. Click on the character. Hi, my name is Marigold. Let me tell you about the time my father turned me to gold. That was not fun at all. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are some of the special words in this story. Sunbeam, garden, golden touch, statue, breakfast, river, king, flower, My name is Marigold. I like my name because it reminds me of a flower called the marigold. I love flowers. They love to be out in the warm sun. I do too. I don't think my father was thinking about flowers when he named me Marigold. No, I think he was thinking about gold. My father is King Midas. He loves gold. We eat breakfast together every morning. I like to tell him about what I'm going to do. My father doesn't always listen to me. He's too busy thinking about gold. Sometimes I think my frog is a better listener than my father. I want to tell you about something strange that happened one morning. When my father and I were outside in our garden, a sunbeam touched some roses. They looked gold. I wish they were gold, said my father. Gold roses? Yuck. I don't think they would smell nice. And metal thorns would hurt. My father went to the room where he keeps his gold. That day, I stayed outside. I heard my father say, Oh, I wish I could make gold. What's so great about gold? I asked my pets. You can't eat it. You can't drink it. You can't sing or dance with it. You can't talk to it. It's not even alive. I'm Mr. Wish. Be careful what you wish for. What do you mean? I know what I want. I looked in the window one more time. 
Was my father going to stay there forever? I thought I heard him talking to someone, but I didn't see anyone. How strange. Oh, well. My frog wanted to play leapfrog. My rabbit wanted to play hopscotch. It was time for me to go. Leapfrog, hopscotch. Happy wishes! I've got the golden touch! I woke up early the next morning. I walked by my father's room. I have the golden touch! I heard him shout. Gold, gold, gold. If he talked about gold again, I would scream. I had no idea what would happen next. Scream. My father got out of bed. He ran around the room. I've always wanted gold socks. I heard him say, Gold socks? Would you want gold socks? You couldn't wiggle your toes in them, and they would go clang when you walked. Clang. My father went outside. I wondered why he wasn't coming to breakfast. My father said something about turning flowers into gold. Then I heard him say something about a gold bunny. A gold bunny? Where was my pet rabbit? I went to find my father. My father had turned everything to gold. Doesn't the garden look wonderful? he asked. Wonderful? It looked terrible. I tried to make him understand. I like gold, too, I said. But I like the gold of sunshine and daisies. Gold trees are too slippery to climb. And a gold rabbit makes a terrible pet. I began to eat breakfast. I couldn't stop thinking about my poor rabbit. My father was hungry, but he couldn't eat a thing. Everything he touched turned into gold. I was worried. What if my father could never eat again? This whole day was starting to feel like a bad dream. <laughs> my father looked very upset. Perhaps he was starting to change his mind about gold. I don't think he liked it so much anymore. I don't like to see my father unhappy, so I tried to make him feel better. I jumped into his arms. All of a sudden, I couldn't move. Throw me up into the air! No! What's going on, I thought. This really is a bad dream. Somebody wake me up! But it wasn't a dream. I had turned into a gold statue. My nose was itchy, but I couldn't scratch it. I wish I never had the golden touch, said my father. I did, too. I wish I never had the golden touch. Didn't I tell you to be careful what you wished for? Didn't I tell you to be careful what you wished for? A man appeared. He told my father to get some water from the river. He told him to pour it on everything he had turned into gold. I hoped my father was quick. My nose was getting more itchy every minute. All right, here's what you must do. Go to the river, 
fill a jug with water and pour it on everything you turn to. My father ran to the river as fast as he could. I stood in the garden and tried not to think about my nose. It was so itchy that I needed to sneeze. But when you sneeze, your nose wiggles, your mouth opens, your eyes blink, and I couldn't do any of those things. <laughs> My father finally came back. He poured the water on me. I could move. I could sing. I could dance. Best of all, I could scratch my nose. I wondered how my rabbit was doing. I could hardly wait to turn him back to normal. Let me help you, I told my father. There's no gold in sight. Thank goodness. I have an idea. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> My father and I poured water everywhere. My pets came back to life. The flowers smelled good again, and the birds sang in the trees. Everything was back to normal. Everything that is, except my father. He was better than normal. Now he doesn't think about gold all the time. He even plays with my rabbit and me. Click on one of these buttons. Okay. When you are ready to. King Midas. Click on the character you want to tell the story. Hello there. I'm King Midas. Let me tell you about my love for golden things. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are some of the special words in this story. Sunbeam, garden, golden touch, statue, breakfast, river, king, flower. I am King Midas. Let me tell you about myself. I live in a castle. I have a daughter named Marigold. I love Marigold more than anything in the world. Now, some people say I am greedy because I like gold. But I'm not greedy. Not anymore, that is. Let me explain. It all began one morning. As always, Marigold and I had breakfast together. Marigold told me about her pets. I tried to listen, but it was hard. I was making up a new rhyme, you see. Gold eggs, gold hens, gold paper, gold pens. In those days, I was always making up rhymes about gold. After breakfast, Marigold and I went into the garden. On that morning, the sun played a trick. A sunbeam shone down on some flowers and made them look like gold. Gold flowers! Suddenly, I had an idea. What if everything in the garden were gold? That would be the very best. 
Gold leaves, gold trees, gold flowers, gold bees, I shouted. I dashed into my gold room. That's where I go when I need to think. And I had to think. I had a lot of gold, but I wanted more. If only I could make gold. Then I could have all the gold I'd ever wanted. Oh, I wish I could make gold, I said. I'm Mr. Wish. Be careful what you wish for. What do you mean? I know what I want. Suddenly, a man in golden robes appeared. Be careful what you wish for, he told me. Careful? Why should I be careful? If only I could make gold, I would be truly happy. The man said that when I woke up the next morning, I could touch things and make them gold. Ooh, I could hardly wait to go to bed. Happy wishes! I've got the golden touch! Every morning, the sun shines into my room. I pull my blankets over my eyes and try to go back to sleep. That morning, my blanket would not move. It felt hard and heavy. I opened my eyes. My blanket was gold! I have the golden touch, I cried. I hopped out of bed. Ooh! What should I touch first? My socks? My vase? My favorite picture of marigold? Zing! I touched each one. I was getting more gold by the second. I ran into the garden. I was so happy that I started to sing. A golden tree, ha ha hee hee. A golden flower, I've got the power. A golden bunny, I'm so funny. A golden frog, wait. What rhymes with frog? I was still singing when I sat down at the table. Did you see my golden tree? And doesn't it look wonderful? Marigold did not sing. She did not even smile. She just held up her rabbit and said, No, it doesn't look wonderful. How could she say that? I could see that Marigold was upset. Don't worry, I told her. I will stop making gold while I eat my breakfast. Or would I? I picked up an apple, but it turned to gold, too. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. Couldn't I turn this golden touch off for just a second? I was so upset, I had to leave. <laughs> I tried to blow my nose. <laughs> I cried. Even the tissue turned to gold. Boo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! This was terrible. But then it got worse. I turned and saw Marigold running toward me. I tried to stop her, but it was too late. She landed in my arms anyway. I didn't want a gold daughter. Throw me up into the air. No! Marigold was cold and heavy. She was shiny and smooth. She was a beautiful gold statue. But I didn't want a statue. I wanted my laughing little Marigold.
I have lost the thing I love most in the world, I cried. I never wanted to see gold again. I wish I never had the golden touch. Didn't I tell you to be careful what you wished for? Suddenly, Mr. Wish appeared. Didn't I tell you to be careful what you wished for, he asked me. Why did he have to say that? I already felt bad enough. The man told me to fill a jug with river water and to pour it on everything I had turned to gold. All right, here's what you must do. Go to the river, fill a jug with water, and pour it on everything you've turned to gold. I ran to the river. I filled the jug as fast as I could. I had to get back to Marigold. Water dropped from the jug as I ran along. Everything I had turned to gold changed back again. How beautiful everything was! <laughs> At last, I was home. Marigold stood in the garden. Would the water work? Would it bring Marigold back? It had to! I poured water on Marigold. At once, she was herself again. I had never been so happy in my life! There's no gold in sight. Thank goodness. I have an idea. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> Marigold and I poured water everywhere. The grass was green again. Ooh, I love all this color, I shouted. Marigold and I spent the rest of the day in the garden. Do you know what? I still like gold. But I have learned one thing. Some things are more important than gold. Click on one of these buttons to play an activity or read a story. OK! When you are ready to read, just click on one of the books. Ugly Duckling. Click on the character you want to tell the story. Rawr. Thanks for choosing me, Sam the Lion. Let me tell you the story of the Ugly Duckling. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are some of the special words in this story. Duckling, ugly, pecked, swan, winter, beautiful, egg, pond.
Let's match and order things from the story. Count two. Not again. Oh, my story map is a mess. You can help read a rabbit. Click on Story Match to match words and pictures. Click on Story Order to put events in the right order. Okay, let's match words to pictures from the story. Road 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 Mirror Mirror Sparks Sparks Picnic Picnic Beak Beak Thanks! Now all the words match the pictures so I can read my story map. All right! Time for a party! <laughs> Click on me and you can play again. All right! Count two! Not again! Oh, my story map is a mess! You can help read a rabbit. Click on Story Match to match words and pictures. Click on... Okay, let's put everything in order. The biggest egg hatched. The biggest egg hatched. The duck family went swimming. The duck family went swimming. Mother duck took her children to the farmyard. Mother duck took her children to the farmyard. The ugly duckling met two wild birds. The ugly duckling met two wild birds. Should we invite him over? The ugly duckling flew into a barrel of butter. <coughs> Yahoo! Now everything is in order, so I can read my story map. You did it! Whee! Time for a party! Click on me, and you can play again. Let's write a letter. Okay, let's write to Mother Duck. Dear Mother Duck, you like to teach your ducklings to fly like a duck. You like to teach your ducklings to fly like a duck. Quack like a duck. You like to teach your ducklings to quack like a duck. Swim like a duck. You like to teach your ducklings to swim like a duck. Act like a pig. It would be funny if you taught them to act like a pig. Act like a monkey. It would be funny if you taught them to act like a monkey. Act like a clown. It would be funny if you taught them to act like a clown. Juggle. Would you let your ducklings juggle? Ride a unicycle. Would you let your ducklings ride a unicycle? Wear funny costumes. Would you let your ducklings wear funny costumes? Eat! If I were a duck, I would eat 
all day. Fly places. If I were a duck, I would fly places all day. Splash around. If I were a duck, I would splash around all day. Sincerely, Sam. A castle. P.S. If you have more ducklings, you should move to a castle. A skyscraper. P.S. If you have more ducklings, you should move to a skyscraper. The ocean. P.S. If you have more ducklings, you should move to the ocean. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. This could take a while. Special delivery for Sam from Mother Duck. Dear Sam, my ducklings should always be happy. I want them to smile, not to frown. That is why I love your idea of teaching them to act like a clown. A clown always makes people laugh. My ducklings could do that too. They could put on red noses and big floppy shoes. What a great thing for ducklings to do. Quack, quack, mother duck. I'll be back a little later, in case you have another letter to send. Look! Oh dear Quill, your story made me feel... ...angry. Your story made me feel angry. Happy! Your story made me feel happy. Sorry for you. Your story made me feel sorry for you. Called you ugly. How did you feel when the animals called you ugly? Pecked at you. How did you feel when the animals pecked at you? Made fun of you. How did you feel when the animals made fun of you? Plug my ears. If someone made fun of me, I would plug my ears. Laugh! <laughs> if someone made fun of me, I would laugh. Turn away. If someone made fun of me, I would turn away. Not fighting. I'm glad that you learned that not fighting is important. Sticking up for yourself. I'm glad that you learned that sticking up for yourself is important. Being yourself. I'm glad that you learned that being yourself is important. Rawr. Sam. Love, Sam. Your pen pal. P.S. You should tell your story to your pen pal. All the other animals. P.S. You should tell your story to all the other animals. The news. P.S. You should tell your story to the news. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, I don't know. This could take a while. Special delivery for Sam from Quill. Dear Sam, 
to be on TV and on the news? That would be quite a thrill. I'd love to hear the reporters say, "Stay tuned for the story of Quill." I would talk about what I have done and how I became a swan, but I would have to be told when to stop, or else I'd go on and on. Your friend, Quill. I'll be back a little later in case you have another letter to send. Look. Okay. Let's write again later. I think my egg has grown. Oh well. That's a beautiful egg. When's it going to hatch? I don't know. Now please let me get back to my work. It was a beautiful morning in the country. Mother duck sat on her eggs. The day grew warm and the eggs began to hatch. One by one, little ducklings came out. Only one egg was left. It was much bigger than the others. Will this strange egg ever hatch? thought mother duck. Finally, it did. I think my egg has grown. Oh well. How do I get out of this thing? How beautiful! Oh, how beautiful! I'm here! Ta-da! Oh my! said Mother Duck to her newest duckling. You are odd-looking. I wonder if you are a turkey chick. Still, I love you. The other ducklings were not so kind. Say, you're sort of ugly, they said. Hush, said Mother Duck. Let's go swimming. I think he's beautiful. Of course, he could use a few more warts, like me. I'm so happy to be with my family. Mummy, is he one of us? I think so. He's so big, like the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk. You are odd-looking. I wonder if you're a turkey chick. Still, I love you. Hush. Now let's go swimming. Splish, splash. One by one, the ducklings jumped into the pond. I can swim," said the ugly duckling. "Then you aren't a turkey chick," said Mother Duck. "Turkeys can't swim." "He swims better than we do," sniffed the other ducklings. They didn't like that one bit. Quack, 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 honk. I can swim. He swims faster than we do. Ah! 
Mother Duck took her children to the farmyard. Mind your manners, she said. The animals in the farmyard were very rude. They fought over a fish. They stared at the ugly duckling. You're ugly, they said. They pecked and pecked at him. I'm leaving, said the ugly duckling. Ouch! All your ducks are so handsome. Do you really think so? Oh, but the big ugly one. I don't think I fit in here at all. Don't say that. You'll do fine. I'm leaving. Hello. I'm Mr. Croak. Hi. My name is Quill. The ugly duckling walked along a country road. No one wants to play, he thought sadly. I don't understand. I know I'm strange looking, but I'm nice. And I would be a good friend. He walked on and on. He didn't know where he was going. So, where are you going? Any place where someone will play with me. Oh, someone will play with you. Just keep trying. Here's some friendly looking birds. I'll be back later. The ugly duckling met two wild birds. How odd looking you are, said the birds. Just then, a hunting dog appeared. He chased the wild birds and they flew away. Then he sniffed the ugly duckling. Ugh! You're not the kind of bird I'm looking for, the dog said. So the ugly duckling was alone again. How odd looking you are! Still, you seem nice. Come join us. You want to play with me? <laughs> Come along with us. We're going to meet up with the rest of our friends and family. They won't be like you, but you're welcome to come. Great. I can hardly wait. Honk. What luck! I bet you'll find someone to play with you in there. You can stay for a while, but only if you can lay eggs. Hey, ask him if he can arch his back like this. Well... Can you? I don't think so. Welcome to our world. Your world? I... The ugly duckling came to a hut. The hen who lived there laid beautiful eggs. The cat made bright sparks fly from his fur. The animals asked the ugly duckling what he could do. I can swim, said the ugly duckling. 
That's nothing special, said the hen. So the ugly duckling went off to find a pond. I don't seem to belong here either. I'm leaving. What beautiful birds! I'll never be like them. Swans. The ugly duckling swam in the pond. A group of wild white swans flew over his head. What beautiful birds! cried the ugly duckling. I could never be like them. The swans didn't hear him. They were busy flying south for the winter. It grew colder and colder. Winter came. Hey, I thought we found a home for you. I can't spark or lay eggs, so nobody wants me. Just be patient. You'll see. What am I going to do? It's getting so cold. The ugly duckling was trapped in the ice. Snow covered the ground. I'm cold, he thought. Will I be trapped here forever? Finally, a farmer came by. You poor little duck, he said. I'll get you out. I'll take you home to my wife and children. Open your bill, Quill. Just give me one little quack. It's a duck. Where? I'll bring you home and warm you by the fire. The farmer brought the ugly duckling into his house. Two noisy children ran up. Play with us! Play with us! they shouted. The ugly duckling was scared. He flew into a milk bucket. He flew into a barrel of butter. Catch him! shouted the farmer's wife. The frightened bird flew out the door. Hey, look who I found. A little ugly duckling. Wow, let's play with him. Oh no, now I have to milk the cow again? Oh no, not the butter! Goodbye and good luck! At last it was spring. The ugly duckling swam in the pond. I'm lonely, he thought. Just then he saw some swans. I wonder if they would be my friends. But I'm so odd looking, and they're so beautiful. I've been pecked, and I've been chased. It can't get any worse, so I might as well say hello. On. <laughs> I think they'll like you. Look at those beautiful birds. I 
know I'm ugly, but please don't make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're ugly, then so are we. When the swans saw the ugly duckling, they rushed over. The ugly duckling was scared. Don't peck me, he said. He bowed his head. The pond was as smooth and clear as a mirror. And in that mirror, a beautiful swan looked up at him. I'm a swan, he cried joyfully. Just look at yourself in the reflection of the water. I'm afraid to. I might scare myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're not ugly. I'm ugly. I'm leaving now. Don't leave. Wait. I'm a swan. We're glad that you're here, said the other swans. Stay with us always. I would love to, said the ugly duckling. A family came to picnic nearby. What a beautiful swan, they said. The ugly duckling didn't say a word. He just stretched his neck and fluttered his wings in pure happiness. Wow, what a beautiful swan. Yeah. <laughs> I never dreamed of so much happiness. <laughs> and he lived happily ever after. The end. on one of these buttons to play an activity or read a story. All right! When you... The Ugly Duckling. Click on the care... Hi! Thanks for picking me. Here, look at this. That's me! Don't you think I was cute? Well, not everybody thought so. Let me tell you my story. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here, and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are some of the special words in this story. Duckling. Ugly. Pecked. Swan. Different. Beautiful. Egg. Pond. I think my egg has grown. Oh well. My name is Quill. Do you know what a quill is? It's a big, strong feather. My mother named me Quill because I'm big and full of feathers. My egg was the biggest one in the nest. I couldn't wait to get out of my egg. Finally, I cracked it open. I'm here! Ta-da! I knew right away that I looked different from my brother and sister. It didn't matter to me, but then they started being mean to me. You're sort of ugly, they said. Ugly? I had feathers. I had a beak. I had a tail that waggled when I walked. What more did I need? 
Now let's go swimming. I went to the pond with my family. Swimming was lots of fun. Then my brother and sister said I quacked louder than a duck. They said I swam faster than a duck. I almost felt like I wasn't a duck. I went to the farmyard with my family. That place was wild. Huge ducks fought over fish heads. A cat ran across the yard. The animals said I was ugly. That hurt my feelings. They pecked me, and that hurt my body. I could have pecked them back, but I knew that fighting wasn't right, so I left instead. I'm leaving. Hello, I'm Mr. Croak. Hi, my name is Quill. I walked along sadly. I'm tired of being different. I'm tired of being ugly, I thought. Hello, cried a warty toad. I'm Mr. Croak. Where are you going? I'll go wherever someone will play with me, I said, without pecking me. The toad was nice, and he tried to cheer me up. Here's some friendly looking birds. I'll be back later. I met two wild birds. Maybe they would be my friends. How odd looking you are, they told me. Just then, a hunting dog appeared. He chased the birds and they flew away. Then the dog sniffed me. Ugh, you're not the kind of bird I'm looking for, he said. No one wants me, I thought sadly. What luck! I bet you'll find someone to play with you in there. You can stay for a while, but only if you can lay eggs. Mr. Croak and I came to a hut. There was a cat who made sparks fly from his fur. There was a hen who laid beautiful eggs. The animals thought I should make sparks and lay eggs, too. Make sparks? Lay eggs? I couldn't lay eggs, and my feathers could catch on fire. I left to find a pond. I don't seem to belong here either. I'm leaving. What beautiful birds. I'll never be like them. <gasps> Swimming alone is fun for a day. It's fun for a week. But after a while, Swimming alone gets really boring. One day, I saw a group of swans flying overhead. Those swans were so beautiful, it made me shiver. Or maybe it was the cold weather. Winter was coming fast. Being frozen in a pond is even worse than swimming alone. But you have plenty of time to think. I thought about lots of things. Why was I so different? Why did some people think I was ugly? Why did it matter how I looked? Why didn't Mr. Croak know he was leaning on me? Finally, I was rescued by a farmer. It's a duck. Where? I'll bring you home and warm you by the fire.
the farmer took me to his home. I was happy. The house was warm and snug, but I wasn't used to being around people. Talk about being different. People are so big. They talk too loud, and they move too fast. I was so scared. I splashed into the milk. I fell into the butter, and I flew out the door. I thought spring would never come. When it did, I honked for joy. I felt different somehow. I felt big and strong and full of life. Some beautiful swans heard me honking. They flew down to the pond. I wanted to say hello, but I was afraid. Take a chance, said Mr. Croak. So I did. I know I'm ugly, but please don't make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're ugly, then so are we. I swam out to the swans. They seemed nice, but I was still afraid they might peck me. I looked down. The pond was like a mirror. I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm a swan! I cried. No wonder I didn't look like the other ducklings. But how did a swan egg get into a duck nest? I guess I'll never know. I'm a swan! Being beautiful made some feel different about me, but in a lot of ways, I was just the same. I still had feathers. And I still had a beak. I still had a tail that waggled when I walked. Most of all, I was still the same inside. I was Quill. I know one thing. I will never call anybody ugly. Everybody looks different. And I'm glad. And he lived happily ever after. The end. on one of these buttons to play an activity or read a story. All right! When you are ready to read, just click on one of the books. The Ugly Hi! Thank When you are ready... The Ugly Duckling. Click on the character you want to tell the story. Hi, I'm Mr. Croak. Let me tell you about the time I helped a poor little bird who everybody said was ugly. He wasn't really ugly. A smelly sock. Now that's ugly. Ribbit. Click here if you want me to read the story. Ribbit. Click here, and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are some of the special words in this story. Duckling, ugly, pecked, swan, different, beautiful, egg, pond. I think my egg has grown. Oh well. 
My name is Mr. Croak, and that's no joke. I'm a fine-looking toad, though I didn't always think so. Back when I was a tadpole, I thought I was ugly. Can you believe it? But this story isn't about me. It's about a friend of mine. I met him when he was still in a big egg. He hatched into a beautiful duckling. I'm here! Ta-da! I was ready to hop along, croaking a song. But then, the duckling's brother and sister started being mean to him. You're sort of ugly, one said. Ugly? Squished peas are ugly. A duckling is not ugly. I decided to stick around. I thought the duckling might need a friend. Hush! Now let's go swimming. The duck family went swimming. Back when I was a tadpole, I loved to swim. Now that I'm a toad, I hop. But I still know a good swimmer when I see one. That duckling was a great swimmer. But his family just talked about how different he was. What's wrong with being different, I thought. <laughs> The duck family went to the farmyard. The animals said mean things about my friend. They pecked at him. Don't be mean. Be green. That's what I say. I didn't like the way those animals were acting. The duckling didn't like it either. I'm leaving, he said. I decided to go with him. I'm leaving. Hello, I'm Mr. Croak. Hi, my name is Quill. The duckling was very sad. No one likes me, he said. He told me his name was Quill. Don't be blue. I like you, I said. Don't let those animals make you feel bad. But everyone thinks I'm ugly, he cried. Ugly, I said. Rotten bananas are ugly. Ducklings are not ugly. Here's some friendly-looking birds. I'll be back later. Quill and I saw two birds. Hit the road, Toad, I said to myself. I wanted Quill to make some new friends. But when the birds saw a hunting dog, they flew away. The dog <laughs> sniffed Quill. Ugh, you're not the kind of bird I'm looking for, he said. Quill should have felt lucky, but he just felt sad. What luck! I bet you'll find someone to play with you in there. You can stay for a while, but only if you can lay eggs. Quill and I came to a hut. The animals there did neat tricks. The cat made sparks fly from his fur. The hen laid beautiful eggs. But those animals were mean to Quill. They told him he should lay eggs and make sparks too. Be who you are and you'll be a star. That's what I say. Quill left to find a pond. 
I don't seem to belong here either. I'm leaving. <laughs> Beautiful birds! I'll never be like them. All that fall, Quill swam in the pond. Once, a group of swans flew overhead. What beautiful birds! cried Quill. He still thought he was ugly. Moldy prunes are ugly. Quill was not ugly. The weather grew cold. Don't catch a chill, Quill, I said. Then I took a long nap. When I woke up, the pond was frozen. I couldn't find Quill anywhere. Open your bill, Quill, I said. Just give me one little quack. I didn't know that Quill was trapped in the ice until a farmer pulled him out. I'll take you home, he told Quill. I thought I would hop along to keep an eye on my friend. It's a duck. Where? I'll bring you home and warm you by the fire. Quill and the farmer went into the house. I heard people shouting, and I heard Quill honking. Was he in trouble? Mr. Croak to the rescue. I hopped into the house. I looked everywhere for Quill. All of a sudden, people started shouting at me. I'm no fool. I stayed cool. But I got out of there fast. In the spring, Quill swam in the pond again. One day, some swans came. Quill was afraid to meet them. I'm so odd-looking, and they're so beautiful, he said. Looks aren't everything, I said. I learned that back when I was a tadpole. Go on, I said. I think they'll like you. I know I'm ugly, but please don't make fun of me. <laughs> well, if you're ugly, then so are we. Quill was still worried. He was sure the swans would be mean to him, but they weren't mean at all. They liked him. Then Quill saw himself for the first time. What a shock! He didn't see an ugly duckling. He saw a beautiful swan. I'm a swan! Wow, what a beautiful swan! Yeah! Quill was very happy. He had new friends. Everyone talked about how beautiful he was. Being beautiful is fine. But being a friend is a lot more important. Quill knows that now. As I hopped off, I saw a prickly little caterpillar. I'm so ugly, he said sadly. Mr. Croak to the rescue. Goodbye, friend. And he lived happily ever after. The end. Click 
on one of... Okay. When you are ready to read, just click on one of the books. This is Pop. Choose a button or click outside of Pop to close Pop. Do you want to stop playing? Bye-bye!